Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at American Barbarian by Tom Scioli. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this is an incredibly fun comic. It's almost like uh, Tom Scioli took all of his childhood loves and shoved them into one uh, graphic novel. Very fat book. And... Uh, this is from IDW. Here's all the bad guys facing off against all the good guys on the front cover. So let's crack this open. We have uh, quotes. Some of these quotes really sum it up well. It's not just Kirby influenced, it's Kirby being channeled. Pretty much the best thing ever. And this one person sums it up really well. It's equal parts He-Man, Commandy, and Braveheart. Though I would substitute Thundar, the Barbarian, for Braveheart there. But uh, that's pretty much what you're going to get here. And I love this. Revenge is a dish dish best served bold. Technically, this is the, the complete series. I think there was an earlier edition of this from Ad House. And uh, IDW picked it up. And I don't know why this is more complete. What was in that first one? Here's a nice tattoo flash of the American Barbarian. Forward by Rob Liefeld. This is actually kind of okay, okayly written. Um, it's not a bad forward. It's not a great one, but I, I hate to say it. I almost think like, I can't even imagine Rob Liefeld uh, writing prose, you know? He seems kind of half illiterate. Book one, The Seven Brothers. So we're in this uh, post-apocalyptic world, um, but it's a kind of zany post-apocalyptic world like Thunder the Barbarian. And uh, the narrator is this uh, older man, and he's talking about his seven sons. And uh, all the way from Gunther the eldest down to Merrick the youngest. The father's name is Yusaman. And I guess they go through this ritual every now and then. They pull out the tangle of swords. And it's these swords that are all tangled up. And then they, I guess they yank at them and see who can pull the most swords. I wanted to mention, guys, I really wish I had the comic book versions of these. I don't know if there are comic book versions, to be honest. But um, this comic, I'm sorry, this book, because uh, a lot of full bleeds, you really lose a lot of art in the the spine here. So I'm I'm opening it as much as I can. It's a pretty tough book, so I think it'll take it, but um kind of annoying. I was reading it last night in bed and I was just like, ah, I gotta really stretch this thing open. This is very Steve Ditko here. Not Jack Kirby at all. Look at that Ditko hand. But for the most part, uh this is all all about uh Jack Kirby worship which is basically Tom Scioli has based his career on ever since he did that. Uh, I, I can't remember that first comic. What was it, Oedipus or Eight Opus? Or <laughs> I can't remember his name. So it turns out the youngest one, he wins. I guess he pulls the tangle of swords stronger than his brothers, Merrick. And so they seem a little resentful. So the father takes him to this uh, secret chamber. He has this special key with a star on it. You know, I didn't even mention, guys, sorry, I forgot. I love how insanely ridiculous this is, but also kind of rad how this family, they all their hair is red, white, and blue colored for no explicable reason. I just thought that was perfect. Perfectly stupid, but also perfect. So he ushers him into this very uh, secret chamber and he shows him the star sword. He says, welcome to your destiny, son. So basically, um, he's destined to wield the sword. Uh, the father already knows that Merrick is the special son, you know. So now we see several years later, uh, basically uh, Yusuman, his family, they're basically the, the guardians of the kingdom. They don't rule, 
they're just like the palace guard and uh, the generals. King Lionhorn is the king. Now look at this guy's here. Meanwhile, Two Tank Omen is on the march. Two Tank Omen is on the march. We'll get back to this in a second. So we see King Lionhorn and his queen. And Yusuman basically wants to have a serious talk with the king. He's, um, everyone knows there's rumors about this two tank omen. His uh, army is uh, an existential threat. They're, you know, they fought off uh, armies before of no good nicks. But this guy seems to be a whole different breed. So he's like, um, your majesty... We have to consider allying ourselves with our kind of enemies, the neighboring uh, people that we uh, haven't really been that friendly with, but that was the time to uh, put our differences aside. Because this uh, two tank omen is, uh, I mean, we're not gonna survive on our own against him. Once again, another Ditko looking face. I didn't even realize this last night when I was reading it. There is a lot of dit going here. And look at this, guys. It continues. Two Tank Omen is on the march. This uh, panel is taking over more of the page. Two Tank Omen is on his way. And um, meanwhile, the sons are uh, engaging in some horseplay. And they're basically pay playing pylon on Merrick. And they're, they're, you know how brothers can be. They're pretty, pretty shitty. They're just really hurting him. But Merrick is kicking their ass. You know, he's he's holding his own. Merrick seems to be really formid formidable. Once again, we see like it's growing, getting bigger, taking over more of the page. Two take Omen and his horde roll on. I love these uh, weird soldiers. They're like zombies and robots and mutants. It's a very motley crew. And the brothers, after they've uh, subdued Merrick, Merica, they, uh, they put him in this cooler. I have to check something real quick, guys, sorry. I think I'm saying his name wrong. wrong. Yeah, it's just Merrick. It's not Merica. Now we see, almost see two tank omen. And look, they're still taking over more of the page. This is a really cool uh, storytelling device. I've never seen it done. But just uh, having a, a second a secondary story, like almost like a split screen, but that it's taking over the screen slowly, page after page. Really neat, uh, good effect. And we see two tanks women's feet, which are two tanks. And before you know it, they're right at the, the gates of King Lionheart's fortress. It's too late. They didn't realize that they were so close. And I'm going to try to open this as much as I can, guys. As you can see, it's still a continuation, just until finally now it's, the, it's taken over. Two Tank Omen is here. This is just the silliest... <laughs> coolest design ever. Yeah, I love that, how throughout this book, Tom Scioli is basically like um, channeling ridiculous memories from his childhood, from He-Man, G.I. Joe cartoons and comics, and Thunder the Barbarian. But he's also mixing it with some pretty rad, like, teenage shit, where, you know, if you were a teenage boy, you'd be like, oh, that's fucking cool. Like, early image and stuff. And to take Omen, <laughs> it's just... So, like, captures that Kirby ridiculousness that, you know, Kirby could be very silly sometimes. But then he would, like, just pull it off, though, and make... I mean, look at the Silver Surfer. The Silver Surfer, when you you think of him as this cool guy, always spouting wisdom and stuff. But really, the original idea, a guy flying through space on a surfboard, that's ridiculous. I mean... <laughs> It might as well be a guy uh, using a pogo stick to jump from planet to planet. The silver pogo. But uh, Jack Kirby gave it a gravitas. 
And I think Tom Seeley has that. Like, this two tank Omen is a scary villain. I mean, he's, he's not to be trifled with, even though he's so silly. So Merrick is stuck in this uh, freezer, and he can hear. Uh, there's a little slot. He can see what's going on. And he sees the invading uh, armies of two tank Omen. And a battle is engaged. Um, Yusoman and his sons are doing really well. They're kind of kicking the soldiers' ass. But there's just so many of these soldiers. Man, look at that. That's some fun shit right there. So many great character designs on all these characters that you're never going to see again. Just like Kirby would do. You know, like, a lot of guys would just make them all a generic, you know, sameness. But he, some of these uh, soldiers in Two Tank Omen's army, it's like, oh, I want that guy to have his own comic. That guy looks cool. There's Two Tank Omen confronting Yusaman. I like how he uses the tank turrets to, as for combat. They're almost like limbs. He knocks the sword out of Yusaman's arm. One of the soldiers is sniffing around the fortress, and he hears Merrick banging on the door to the freezer. And right when he's about to open it up, Merrick smashes through. That is a pretty powerful panel right there. And Merrick kicks his ass, grabs his sword and stabs him. And now he's ready to fight. But as soon as he uh, jumps into the fray, he sees all of his family dead. That's a really nice, well-drawn panel with the tones and everything. Tom Seal is kind of erratic in his art, but I think he does it on purpose. I think he likes that, like, you know, those 80s black and white comics, early image, where it's almost like the crudity is almost a, a virtue. So now we have book two, Revenge. Merrick's crying over his family. His father's not quite dead, though. God, that hair thing is just, just turning into op art. He gives, uh, the father uh, gives Merrick the key to that chamber where the star sword was. And then he says, now go kick some ass for your old man, American Barbarian. I guess that's his nickname. And so when he goes outside, Tutan Common is, uh, he has this thing at giant scale where he likes to weigh the treasure that he um, wrestled from his uh, victims. And he likes to weigh it against the amount of bodies that he slayed, that his armies have slain. <laughs> kind of weird. I like how Two Tank Omen gets this little panel here with a logo. Two Tank Omen. And uh, they find the king. Man, look at this. Just a really weird, great design for Two Tank Omen. The king will not uh, uh, submit. He spits in his face. So, of course, they kill him. Put him on the scale. Meanwhile, American Barbarian is kind of thinking about what he's going to do. And he writes revenge on his fingertips. He scratches it into the tips of his fingers. And this is so weird, this part here. All of a sudden, the art turns all like, I don't know, airbrushy or whatever this is. And then it's an actual photo of two hands. With We can see the revenge. I don't know if you can see it. It's very faint. This isn't a very good f uh, photograph. And then Merrick lifts all of his brothers and his father, his, their bleeding bodies. That's a weird image. And he puts them in these crypts. And then he goes to get the... I'm sorry, he locks up the star, star sword. To make sure nobody can get it. And so uh, we meet Two-Ton Commons. Uh, second in command is Greylock, this guy here. And uh, Greylock knows that Merrick has the key um, somehow. 
And he's, he says, hey, he's missing. We got to find this guy. He's got the key. And then Mary comes out of nowhere. And uh, basically he says, aren't you going to ask me to join your armies? Because I guess they say that to all of their victims. Join us or die. And uh, I like how revenge doesn't fit on ten fingers, right? So he just says three exclamation points. <laughs> kind of part of the whole dopiness of this. So um, Greylock doesn't want him to join the army. He's like, we have no need for one such as you. So Merrick says, send your greatest champion. I'll prove my worth to you. And they send this guy out. Kind of looks like a big zit. And uh, look at that Kirby shading, inking there. And they they begin to brawl. And uh, some really fun action panels. Tom Scioli, because he likes Kirby, and obviously now I think he likes Ditko. He likes to do, uh, you know, fight choreography. Show each blow landing and... for the fight. Pretty fun stuff. I'm such a sucker for this kind of stuff. Blow by blow action in every panel. And so two, how do you say this goddamn name? Two tank omen accepts him. And then uh, he says, better let me raid the next castle by myself to prove my worth to you. And they all look at him like, what? And so they see this rolling castle. I mean, it's not really, it's just this huge transport, but it's almost the size of a fortress, you know? And so Merrick gets a beat up old car from the pre-apocalyptic times. Maybe it's a Chevy, I don't know, cars very well. And he just says, okay, you guys hold back. I'll uh, take care of this. City with a heart of darkness. Oh, I love this fucking page. These two pages. Um, this is so much fun. So you, I, I hope you guys can see it. It's one of those, uh, oh, it's almost like Jeffy in Family Circus. We see him. He parks the car at the bottom here, climbs up, fights these guys, inset panels, and then we see him just traversing through this rolling fortress. Uh, talk about uh, choreography. He just shows every leap and uh, every sword thrust. Gets up on the roof here. Knocks out the laser gunner up here. And then I think it continues back over here. He runs over to this laser, uh, turret. And then we see him swinging. Swings into this room. Knocks out these guys. Runs down these stairs. This is so much fun. I mean, God, when I was a kid, I would have loved shit like this. And then he makes it to this one room. And see this big black half circle here? I almost feel like something's missing here. Like this was supposed to be a triple fold out. A flap. Because it's not the whole thing. Which all that work he put into it. It's kind of weird. So then uh, it continue, he continues. He's throwing guys out of the ship, fighting this little robot down here. And the guy he throws out, I think he was the leader. I just love how he, he's on the ground just saying, asshole. So he rounds up all of the people working there. It seems like they're just scientists. And he binds them and throws them in this cell. They say, we've been beaten by a one-man army. Another little shout-out to Jack Kirby. And, uh, and then the, um, the soldiers come in, and they say, whoa, you really did it. And it looks like they're going to kill the prisoners. But that's the chapter break. Another weird, interesting, uh, I don't know what he's using here to get this effect. It's kind of odd. Maybe it's trying to look like a toy box cover.
So basically, uh, Merrick kills those soldiers. We see the blood, their blood on the floor. And then he locks these people up in this chamber. Meanwhile, you know, uh, two tank omens doing his scale thing. And he says, hey, where are the bodies? And Merrick lies and says that they, they ran away when they, you know, they saw me, what I was doing. Merrick tries to just say, hey, we have their treasure and now we have their fortress. Who cares about the people? So two tank omen buys it and now they have this, uh, they're in charge of this fortress. So everyone's partying. Looks like they're drinking and driving, which with a vehicle this big seems really dumb. And Merrick goes down to that chamber where he sealed up the scientists. And they're saying, let us out. He's like, be, be quiet, I'm here to help you. And Greylock comes upon him. He says, looks like we have a traitor in our midst. So now we have this uh, cover, American Barbarian. I couldn't find anywhere on the internet. I don't know if these were published as individual floppy comics. It almost seems like it's broken up in that way. And they have things like this, which could have been the cover. I don't know. I'm sorry. I should have done better research. But I just couldn't. Grand Comic Database just said there was the Ad House book. And then this book, three years later, in a, came out in 2015. But this is a later edition. So there's Greylock. I like Greylock has a pretty cool design. I never noticed this. He has a big G on his chest. So we see those dead soldiers that he killed the day before. God, I love that. His shield has the eye in the pyramid thing going on. Such a really zany idea for uh, character design. And so uh, Merrick frees all the scientists. And uh, he holds the soldiers at bay. And of course, a big battle ensues. Greylock and Merrick are fighting. Some more fun choreography. We see this woman escape. See, look at all these soldiers. All of them have these cool costumes, cool designs, cool armor. I'll try to stretch it open as much as I can. And eventually they subdue Beric. He can't fight the whole army. So he's locked up with all the scientists. And Two Tank Omen is uh, just mows down all the scientists. Of course, except for that woman who escaped. And Merrick is like, oh man, I really screwed up. And so now they're finally going to get the key. I guess the key is like knotted into his hair. And the woman has enough time to totally escape. Like she's uh, running far away. They say, how should we kill him? He tells, asks his men, death by dinosaur. Let me pop his eyes out. Hungru gra gra <laughs> So it looks like they dump him with these uh, shackles on. And uh, Tutankhamun says, let's go get that sword. And then all of a sudden, this lightning bolt uh, illuminates his surroundings and these dinosaurs are around him. And look at this. I've never seen Tom Taylor do this trying to pull like a Frank Miller. This looks very uh, Sin City-ish. Seems like he doesn't quite have it down yet. <laughs> it looks kind of neat, though. So every time the lightning uh, crashes, we get to see more, you know, the everything turns white and black and white. So now Temple of the Star Sword. 
So he, uh, apparently these dinosaurs are all around Merrick. And uh, he says that, uh, he's talking to himself. He says, my father often told me of the kindness of the dinosaurs he, he'd encountered. But then when the next time the lightning strikes, he gets a good look at him. He says, oh shit, they're Robosaurs. I'm fucked. So I guess Robosaurs are um, all like loyal to, to Tank Omen. You know that Tom Scully was taking out his old devil dinosaur comics for this. He draws dinosaurs just like Kirby. Very square, very rectangular heads. This rope ladder comes down, this pit. And I'll try to crack this open again. This is a nice two-page spread. We see Merrick diving through the dinosaur's clutches, trying to reach the rope ladder. <clears throat> and he makes it. And when he comes out, it's that leader of the scientists who was knocked out of the the rolling arc and that woman. They're the only survivors. And she vouches for Merrick, basically saying, you know, he did save us. He could have killed us, but he was trying to keep us alive. And, uh, the woman says that I'm going to come with you. Uh, Olsen, that's his name, the brother. I, mean, I didn't mention that, sorry. That's their brother and sister. Olsen's planning to go to the direct dinosaur people to enlist their aid. And Merrick is uh, going to confront Tutank Omen and try to get that star sword. So he says, I don't want you coming with me. It's too dangerous. And she basically convinces him that he has to take her. He owes it to her after all the shit he pulled. You know, giving Tutank Omen their scientific rolling arc. Giving him all that great technology. <laughs> Look at that horse. It's very Kirby once again. I like this as a iron-on design of American Barbarian. So let me try to stretch this again. Another two-page spread. We see two tank omen and his army on the march, and Merrick and this woman. I'll get her name eventually. <laughs> Actually, let me get her name now. I don't want to keep calling her this woman. That's a Desmond Decker song. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, fuck it. Oh, I guess her name's Uli. Transitional uh, pages. Seeing them travel. Really nice though. And it looks like uh, Merrick gets to the star sword first. And basically he fires Greylock. Two tank omen says, this is your idea. And he even tells us the third in command to kill him. It says, kill him, Slidge. You're my new number two. But then all of a sudden they hear this, these horse hooves and they see this rainbow effect through the air. <laughs> so silly. It's not just his hair. It's the star sword. The star sword leaves like a, uh, emits this radiation or whatever, this rainbow effect. And of course, two take open says, bring me that sword. Next, to kill a god. And we see it's going to be a very, very action oriented issue or a chapter. <laughs> Look at those groovy uh, red, white, and blue stripes. Look, it's just slicing through these soldiers. The Star Sword is uh, kind of almost magical. Another 
just all of a sudden a design shift in, uh, not design, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, uh, I don't know, he's using different uh, drawing tools. All of a sudden the horse looks like shit. <laughs> he looks like a seahorse. But then that's a great horse right there. A great comic book horse, I should say. This is a good page all around. And it looks like Merrick escapes them. <clears throat> Sorry, Merrick escapes. Merrick looks at his fingers, the revenge, and in his eyes we see never. Kind of a misspelled or flipped around. So they're traveling through this icy wasteland. And then they find uh, another group. Look at this here, taking out the watercolors. Kind of interesting looking, kind of nice. He can tell though, that's like uh, Tom Scully, like it's not, <laughs> this is new for him. It looks like he's just experimenting, but it looks really good. And so this is the land of Mother Nefarious. She's one of those neighbors that uh, Yusuman wanted uh, the king to ally with. And it almost looks like he's uh, riffing on uh, the Forever People. What is that, Super Town? It's just this really goofy, weird uh, place. Look at this guy. He would totally fit into the Forever People. There's Mother Nefarious, another cool uh, character design. So there's a lottery, and they give uh, Uli and the, uh, Merrick tickets, and they win. They're some of the winners. I guess there's like eight or ten winners, something like that. We have another like pin-up type thing going on. And I guess the prize is they get to meet God. And then Uli says, have we met? You look familiar, this guy. And he says, my name is Galileo, Leo. But there's someone that people always confuse me with. You must be thinking of new. <laughs> people get us mixed up all the time. This is just this totally goofy shout out to, uh, to be honest, I don't know who this guy's supposed to be. He looks very familiar to me, the, um, the parody, but this is obviously Ukula the Mock from Thundar. He's even going, rah, 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 just like Thund uh, Ukula used to always do. And then uh, he says, yeah, this guy, he gets confused first too. His name's Buchaka. And so it's basically Chewbacca, but with like a scream mask on. It's kind of a weird design, but you totally get it. He's got a crossbow and everything. Buchaka has been around longer than any of us. So it's he's drawing the lineage of those fuzzy characters. He should have had Chaka from the Land of the Lost thrown in there into the mix. So they're waiting for God to show up. And this weird like rainbow looking, well not rainbow, this like very colorful ghost like character comes out of, comes out of nowhere. And he's kind of saying just weird nebulous stuff. The Cathedral of the Old God, the Clackers. Don't let go of them, the laser zapping Clackers. Oh, and beware of my brother. And they think God is a brother? Then they realize, oh wait, that wasn't God. This is God. So this guy shows up. Pretty goofy looking. It's like Slimer from the Ghostbusters. And, uh, this is a, a very, uh, not nearly as good a God. And he grabs the first guy and throws him in his mouth. This guy's got a cone head, but it's very gnarly. So of course, Merrick saves the day, tries to uh, 
stop this monster. But um, not only is it, he's, uh, you know, got these huge teeth, but he's also got these uh, beams that come out of these tentacle type things that turn people to stone. So it looks like the Ukla the Mock guy knew got, gets it. He's turned to stone. Whoa, look at that. That almost uh, could give you a seizure if you had epilepsy. Some zany stuff. And uh, America sneaks around to the top of the cave, thrusts his sword in the monster's head. And we kind of get another little pinup. But the monster's not dead. So, of course, he's like, how do you kill a god? Chapter 7. And so uh, Merrick rips two of these tentacles off of uh, the creature. And uh, he uses them like clackers. <laughs> Do you remember those little stupid clacker things? I think they were big in the 80s or 90s. And they're la these are the laser clackers. And he's like clacking them away and lasers are shooting out. And eventually he... Uh, throws them right into the mouth of the, the maw of the creature. I kind of like this page. And then he turns to stone. The creature turns to stone. And then it seems like everyone who has turned to stone is back to normal. And everyone's happy. And uh, Merrick is the hero of the day. And this little kid sees the laser clackers. I guess they popped out of the creature's stomach. And um, all of a sudden, that multicolored uh, person comes back. The polychromatic man. And he grabs the clackers and fades out. Fades out of existence. So Merrick says, I'm heading, I'm heading out to kick some ass. Do you guys want to help me? Will you be my army? American Barbarian has a posse, which now he does. So now we see Mother Nefarious and all of her citizens are all helping Merrick. They're on the trail of two tank omen. They find him in this canyon and they uh, use explosives. It's a nice sound effect there. And try to bury two tank omen. Oh, I see what happened. Sorry. I mean, they... Uh, I guess it was like there was a dam. And so, yeah, there's a dam right there. I didn't even notice that last night. I guess it's not that well drawn. But um, they're all flooded. Two Tank Omen and his armies are flooded. But then they slowly start creeping out. So uh, Merrick leads the charge. And uh, Battle Royale begins. Once again, look at Merrick's sword just cleaving whole bodies in two. And he confronts two tank omen. <laughs> look at that. And so uh, Greylock comes back, conks Merrick on the head, and uh, two tank omen accepts him back into the fold. He says, good work, my boy. And Greylock says, hey, make no mistake, I'm not back for any love for you after what you did to me. But I just hate this guy so fucking much. <laughs> That's what he says. And then Merrick wakes up and they start fighting. And uh, it's this pretty epic battle they're having. And Greylock's helmet falls off. And who should it be but Gunther, his oldest brother from that first chapter. <coughs> Sorry about that. Chapter 8, Brother Against Brother. Oh, I guess I should show you this nice little drawing. And he says, Gunther, how could you have done it? And he says, hey, you joined up with two tank open the first chance you got too. And I guess Gunther has always resented and hated Merrick. 
because he was the one destined to wield the star sword. He was the chosen one and Gunther was going to be passed over. Some of this, uh, these panels, you really see like the kind of crude 80s black and white shit going on. Not, not so great. But like I said, I really think that's part of his modus operandi. He uh, really likes that. The raw vitality of that kind of comic book art. Look at that. It looks like Don Simpson or something. <laughs> it looks all weird. So Greylock gives the Star Sword to two Tink Omen. And all of our heroes are surrounded. And Merrick is put in change. And so is Uli. Uh, obviously a, a shout out to the Princess Leia, Slave Leia. I, I wish I uh, could have slowed down and pointed out everything, but almost every page has some kind of uh, shout out to some uh, pop culture thing from Tom Scully's childhood, some beloved thing. He really packs it. Most of it's pretty obvious, you know, like the Kirby comics. But uh, there's definitely a lot of movie references. So then finally the dinosaur people show up. And they ride real dinosaurs. So I guess uh, Uli's brother, well, I can't remember his name, Ungar or something, he was successful in recruiting the dinosaur riders. And so now they're going to help fight two tank omen. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> dinosaurs are just chomping on these guys. Oh, you know what I, sorry, just realized. Uh, at first, they're attacking Merrick and his uh, allies because they don't know what the hell's going on. And that uh, Ungar guy, whatever his name is, I can't remember, the sci head scientist, he has to say, stop you fools, no. <laughs> These aren't the two tanks warriors. They, they mistake Merrick's guys for two tank omen soldiers. So the dinosaurs stop killing people. This one dinosaur lets Merrick down and then he punches him in the eye. <laughs> Think next time. And uh, so now they're all united. It's uh, the ally powers. So I guess they um, got control of that uh, rolling uh, arc again. Um, basically, Two Tank Omen kind of abandoned it with, uh, with these robots let, let in charge, left in charge. But these robots don't really care. They just want to work the machines. So they've been... Just, basically, these guys just came in and started a, and took over the space arc. And the robots aren't fighting them or anything. They're just doing their little chores. They're technicians. Dorky nerd bots. <laughs> They're pretty agreeable. I do like the design of these guys. So then, um, remember that black hole we saw in the space arc when uh, Merrick was uh, fighting his way through it? So that is literally, it's a black hole that powers the thing. And they've used it to figure out a way to t uh, time travel. So Merrick is going to uh, uh, be the d um, test subject of it. He's going to test it out. Chapter 9, Time Lord. And basically he jumps into this time wave thing this time I can't describe it some kind of time travel thing we find out that these scientists are actually they're old so old that they lived before the apocalypse to the, because of their science their super science they've uh, lengthened their lives so he wants a Merrick to go back in time and avert um, the great clusterfuck, as they all call it, when everything went to shit. But he says, screw that. I just want to stop, uh, you know, two tank omen from killing my family and from my brother betraying us. Look at that crazy musculature. 
So he dives into the time machine. And I guess he's, uh, di there's this like color stuff that protects him through the time travel. And you can probably see where this is heading. That looks very familiar, doesn't it? Okay, so no doubt now. He uh, definitely has some Ditko influence there. That's a really fun page. Basically, it's just abstract art. Oh, I like that. So, he, Merrick, was that polychromatic angel that saw um, Merrick and uh, the other people earlier. So he's saying the same thing. He's saying the clackers. And the reason why he's speaking gibberish is because the time travel has made him sick. He's basically just like can barely think. He's just like drunk. But that's some pretty cool shit. It's uh, with no uh, holding lines. Just these blotches of color. Looks kind of nice. So basically we see the whole scene from uh, future Merrick's point of view now. It's the same scene we just saw like 50 pages ago. So Merrick comes back and he's got those laser clackers. Remember the rainbow, the polychromatic guys uh, grabbed them from the little girl. And uh, some of two tank omen soldiers jump onto the rolling arc and uh, he laser clacks them. Clickety clack. And they go off to fight to take Omen for the big battle. And uh, Merrick is just whipping those uh, clackers back and forth. And they're just zapping so many of the two tank Omen's army. And so now it looks like we're going to have a final showdown between the two brothers here. Oh, try to open this. Uh, see what I mean? So much of the art is lost in this book, in the spine. <laughs> the dinosaurs are just chomping down on the bad guys. It's an all-out melee here. Oh, another two-page spread. Let me try to get this. So, Tutank Omen has got the Star Sword. And, uh... Look at him just chopping dinosaurs' heads off. While his tank feet are blowing them away. Or, uh, Shooting them dead. More crazy two-page spreads here. Which... We're basically missing half an inch of. And then Uli uh, is tired of just being a little slave wench. And she grabs the star sword from Tutank Omen and she frees herself. I like how he calls her a slattern. <laughs> and she actually cuts him. And of course he's pissed off. He says, you dare defile the sacred body of Tutank Omen. <laughs> a dinosaur just chops him down. Tank treads and all. It's sticking out of his throat here. Meanwhile, Merrick is fighting his brother. And Merrick spares his life. He says, just go. Get out of my sight, basically. In the name of our father. So Merrick and Uli are reunited and they hug. And it looks like obviously there's a bromance in the air. I like how Tom Scioli kind of uh, continues the tradition of Jack Kirby drawing pretty unattractive women. <laughs> it's like, if I'm gonna draw like Jack Kirby, I can't make a woman look attractive. We get a little, uh, it's almost like a pinup, but it's Two Tank Oban lives. And Two Tank Oban bursts out of the belly of that dinosaur. I guess the dinosaur couldn't digest him. And now uh, Merrick is going to take on Two Tank Oban. 
once again using his uh, cannons as uh, limbs. I love this here. How he's kicking him. So it's like the whole tank is lifted up, like his foot. Man, this comic is just so fucking fun. <laughs> I mean, even the colors, it just like looks fun, you know? And then uh, Merrick says, I have a new weapon to fight with. And I guess this thing controls the black hole. We saw this earlier when they were doing the time travel business. I like how he makes it one of those old uh, rotating Atari controllers that you'd play um, uh, Pong with. What was the other one you played with that? The Breakout? I can't remember the name of it. I think it was Breakout. That was pretty addictive. And oh, this is, uh, continues on the next page here. Oh man, this is so annoying. And so, two, two Tank Omen gets sucked through this black hole, but he grabs, he grabs Merrick's arm and starts sucking him in two. And it looks like that's the end of Merrick and Two Tank Omen. They find the Star Sword, and uh, the brother gives it to Uli. Says this is all we were able to find of him. And we see all the people now, the survivors, who survived this big battle. And uh, one of the dinosaur writers says, We declare a new alliance of our people. We name this union after the great hero who made this all possible. Our new nation shall be known as the United States of Barbaria. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. So I guess all these, uh, we see like America post-apocalypse. It's like that map in Commandy. And I guess they're all going to be allies now. So I guess this is like a year later after Merrick died. And Uli goes to pay her respects. She drops some flowers in that uh, star sword chamber. And then she looks up crying. And then we just see this little pinup image. And that's it. So I didn't really quite get it. I don't know what she saw. Maybe Merrick is resurrected. But um, obviously he wouldn't have the star sword. So I don't know. It's a just kind of, I don't know if this is just a little pinup. And that was supposed to be the last page of the comic. Just to leave you guessing, you know? Things that make you go, hmm. The end. Little picture of Tom Scioli. Looks like a little boy. <laughs> that guy. Some rough sketches of uh, one of the two-page spreads. Some groovy uh, extra art here. More two-page spreads. Oh, I love this. I really hope there's another uh, American Barbarian story just so we can use this uh, character design, this costume design. So really, all, I like all these pinups. They're all pretty fun. Oh, is this supposed to go this way? I guess that makes more sense like that. And that's it, guys. American Barbarian by Tom Scioli. I'm, God, I probably said his name wrong 50 times that video. I just don't know how to say his name. But um, hope you enjoyed looking at it. And uh, I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies.